Lady probably, who is being honored today in Ali Memorial Lake. Prestigious Ali Memorial Lake. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. We are uh, highly proud of you. Thank you so much. Sir. And all the time, we hope you will be beside Bangladesh. Always, always. Yeah. Always. Okay, thank you. Thank you. home to me, always. Uh -huh. Now it is 10.30. If you uh, permit us, we will start this session. 10.30. Google time, 10.30. Okay. You are the person to say, start the session. Yeah. But now the president. So. Recording in progress. Yes. yes. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Namruta Sharma, uh, uh, Professor Abha Hussain, who is the president of Asia Pacific Academy of Ophthalmology uh, here. We are uh, with uh, Dr. Professor Dr. Nujar Choudhury, uh, Professor uh, Mustak Ahmed, Professor uh, Abdul Kader, Professor Deepak Kumar Nath. I welcome all of the ophthalmologists who are attending this session uh, at the 48th National Annual Conference of uh, Ophthalmological Society of Bangladesh, which is being held both virtually and uh, physically. I think uh, I welcome all of you. And uh, today, in this session, uh, Professor Deepak Kumar Nath will, uh, 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 Chair, Chair. Uh, Dr. Mustafa Ahmed, they will organize this session. And first of all, welcome speech by Dr. Mustafa Ahmed. And I think we can start now, as because it is 10.30. Again, I welcome you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Share. 
am i audible Uh, sir, I am starting from uh, beginning because of my uh, sound was not clear, uh, defective technical problem. Uh, Professor Normata Sharma, Professor of Ophthalmology, Cornea, Cataract and Defective Surgery Services, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, Center for Ophthalmic Sciences, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Dr. Normata Sharma did her post graduation from Rajendra Prasad, Center for Ophthalmic uh, Sciences, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. She did her fellowship from Morfield's Eye Hospital in London. She is the Regional Secretary, Asia Pacific Academy of Ophthalmology. She is the Honorary Secretary General of All India Ophthalmological Society. Her clinical work includes phagomancification surgeries, LASIK, PRK, SMILE, and FACIC intocular lenses. Her keen areas of interest are phagomancification, including DEL, DSEC, DMAC and pure segment reconstructive procedures, ocular surface surgeries, and keratoprosthesis. Awards and achievements two patent Natasol and Natamatrix, brand ambassador for the TR Film and Ocular Surface Society in India, Research Committee, remember Asia Pacific Academy of Ophthalmology. She is honored as one of the 100 most influential female figures in ophthalmology in the world, the Power List 2021 by the ophthalmologist. Assessment Award, Asia Pacific Academy of Ophthalmology, Best Video Award by European Society of Cataract and Effective Surgery, Best Video Award, Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Ophthalmology, Best Paper Presentation, American Academy of Ophthalmology, International Ophthalmologist Education Award, American Academy of Ophthalmology, Best of Show Awards six times by the American Academy of Ophthalmology. National Awards, Conlan Rangasi Medal, All India Ophthalmological Society, AC Agarwal Trophy, Delhi Ophthalmological Society, Krishna Swan Singh Award, Delhi Ophthalmological Society, Om Prakash Oration Award, Punjab Ophthalmological Society, Gold Medal, Indian Intraocular Implant and Defective Surgery, Appreciation Award, Association of Community Ophthalmologists in India, AIMS Inter Excellent Research Award two times. She has 526 publications in peer-reviewed journals, 119 book chapters, has authored 17 books, actively involved in teaching of undergraduates as well as postgraduates via various teaching programs, has conducted and coordinated various hands-on training programs. She is the General Secretary of All India Ophthalmological Society, Secretary I Bank Association of India, Chairperson, Scientific Committee of Indian Society of Cornea and Character Reflective Surgeons, Executive Member of Cornea Society of India, Member of Women of Thalmic Society and Intraocular Implant and Reflective Society of India, Ex Secretary of Delhi Ophthalmological Society. Thank you for your patience here. Respected audience, now I would like to invite Professor Namata Sharma to deliver today's prestigious Ali Memorial Lecture, she will talk on Phaco Emulsification in Corneal Haze. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Mohammad Mustaq Ahmed for that kind introduction. Uh, it was really uh, uh, very, uh, it was, uh, I would like to you know, thank uh, uh, Ophthalmological Society of uh, uh, Bangladesh for having me uh, give this honor and this oration. I am uh, completely overwhelmed and absolutely touched. I would like to address the uh, uh, dais here, Professor Abha Hussain, ma'am, my inspiration, Dr. Sharputi Ahmad, President OSB, uh, Dr. Mohammad Abdul Qadir, Secretary General OSB, Dr. Deepak Kumar Nag, Chairman Scientific Committee OSP, Dr. Mohammad Mustaq Ahmad, Member Secretary Scientific uh, Subcommittee OSP, and my very dear friend, uh, Dr. Uh, Nuzat uh, Chaudhary. Uh, it is an honor and pleasure uh, to be giving this uh, uh, Dr. Alim Chaudhary Award uh, today. And 
it was very i was very touched by what dr nuzat uh, chaudhary uh, actually narrated uh, after hearing the background i was completely overwhelmed and it is really uh, nice to know that such people do exist who work not only for themselves like we all do but work for the society um, in general uh, it is uh, a pleasure again and an honor for me to give this uh, lecture and i would be talking to you about um, Echo emulsification in corneal plates. Now there are no financial or proprietary interests, and I will be talking to you about off-label use of trypan blue dye and air. And whenever you have a case of uh, cataract uh, as well as uh, corneal opacity, the bigger question is that uh, whether you should do uh, cataract surgery alone in these cases, or combine it with other procedure like a corneal transplantation procedure. So the factors which determine whether you will do a single stage surgery or a combined procedure uh, depend on the type of the corneal haze, location of the haze, expertise of the surgeon, whether uh, you are an expert at, at SICS or PECO, availability of the donor corneas, and visual requirement in terms of risk benefit analysis. Uh, if the corneal opacity is paracentral or peripheral like this, one can do a single stage procedure, and if it is central with the anterior layers involved or the posterior layers involved or all the layers involved, one has to then uh, change the procedure accordingly. There may be ocular surface problems in a case of uh, cataract and then uh, you have to address that. The mainstay is the use of lubricants, uh, preferably without preservatives. If there's some inflammation, then that needs to be controlled using lotepretinol, 0.5% QID 2 to 4 weeks preoperatively and topical cyclosporin in 0.05% BD for 12 weeks. And this can be used for six months to one year also. And then punctal uh, occlusion may have to be done. In cases where you have uh, cataract with terigium, and if the terigium is small, then one can anatrophic, then one can do it simultaneously, provided that there is no uh, alteration in the keratometry due to the terigium. If it is a large terigium, uh, which is blocking the pupillary area, then one has to address that. If it contributes to corneal astigmatism of more than uh, two uh, diopter or extension more than 2.2 millimeter into the lipus or width more than five or total area of more than 6.25 square millimeter, then one has to do terigium surgery first and wait for six to eight weeks after terigium surgery and then do pecomensification subsequently later. In cases of salzman nodular degeneration, if it is present in the peripheral part, again, keratometry has to be done. But if it is present in the central part, then PTK should be done first because some amount of hyperopia would be introduced. And because of the corneal flattening, you may have to uh, change your uh, 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 IOL power. Now, IOL power calculation is a little tricky in these cases. Uh, fellow eye keratometry needs to be done sometimes. Uh, because of the irregular corneal topography due to epithelial edema or scarring. If you are combining it with a DSEC procedure, then one has to uh, take account of the fact that there will be some amount of hyperopia because of addition of tissue. And so aim for minus 1.25 diopters of myopia. And uh, uh, you may use a standard monofocal lens and aspheric eyeballs are preferred and generally multifocal intraocular lenses are avoided in such cases. Now, this is the algorithm that we uh, published with cataract surgery with corneal opacity, which involves a small central corneal opacity, which is partially covering the visual axis. One can do PECO alone. You may have to do optical iodine in some cases. And if only superficial involvement less than 100 microns is there, you may do PTK first, followed by PECO emulsification. But if the involvement is up to one third of the cornea, then you may have to do superficial anterior lamellar keratoplasty with PECO and IOL or SALC triple. If it involves two-third cornea, that is up to 70% depth, you may have to do automated lamellar therapeutic keratoplasty or ALTK triple PECO with IOL. If it is corneal opacity, sparing the desmus membrane and endothelium, then you have to do DALC triple. And if it is involving only the endothelium, then you may have to do DSEC or DEMEC triple. And if all the layers are involved, then of course, you'll have to do penetrating keratoplasty triple. This is our review article, which was published in Journal of Cataract and uh, Refractive Surgery on FECO with coexisting corneal opacity. And like I said earlier, that we generally use a monofocal lens. Biometry can be done by ultrasound B scan or immersion scan. IOL master is often not possible in these cases. And uh, again, keratometry and video keratography may be uh, 
difficult because of the corneal haze and irregular cornea. So you may have to take standard keratometry for some of the cases. Now, whenever there is a case of fixed dystrophy with cataract and there are no epithelial changes, the corneal thickness is less than 650 cells or more than 1000 cells, you can do FECO alone. If there are no epithelial changes and the corneal thickness is less than 650 cells are less than 800, then one can counsel the patients do sequential FECO with or without endothelial keratoplasty. However, if it is a poor view for FECO emulsification, the corneal thickness is more than 650 cells less than 800, then one has to do a triple procedure. I will uh, be talking about uh, these uh, modifications in the technique which we've already published uh, as I show you the videos. Uh, so, site of the incision have to be plan planned. So, one half of the cornea should remain here for uh, us to do FACO emulsification. So, in, for instance, if the corneal opacity is here, then you would do a temporal incision. But if it is located here, then one would do a superior incision. This is a case of uh, limbal stem cell deficiency where uh, trap and blue straining of the uh, rexis is done. And just as you go underneath that haze which is present there, you tend to go in one go uh, with the help of the capsular rexis forceps uh, because uh, you don't want to lose the edge of the rexis there. And then, of course, you can do your uh, nuclear emulsification as you would do normally. And again, do irrigation aspiration as one would do normally and subsequently do a foldable intraocular lens implantation. Now, this is a case of flux dystrophy with cataract and the patient didn't want a corneal transplantation procedure. You can see that there are which are already present here and in these cases you can do a FACO emulsification see how it goes only the important thing is that you should uh, always see in the post-operative period uh, and whenever uh, it is required one can do um, uh, endothelial keratoplasty at a later date but having said that this coat uh, should be used to protect the endothelium throughout the procedure and BSS plus uh, irrigating fluid should be used so that uh, the endothelial cells don't get compromised. Now, this is a case of a healed keratitis, one-eyed patient, other eye thysis with optical eye technique. And because the patient had corneal transplantation with uh, corneal transplantation with infection which went into thysis in the fellow eye, he did not want uh, corneal transplantation in this eye. So that is why a capsular rexis is being done. And you can see that the globe manipulation has to be done. The rexis can be a little eccentric. You can't leave the edge of the rexis underneath that case. Otherwise, you will not be able to find it. And eccentric rexis is being done because that is the area the patient is going to see post-operatively. That is also the area which you can see right now. And again, eccentric rector technique is being done here uh, with the help of uh, big emulsification pro. And retro illumination should always be on because as you do FICO in C2, that means you uh, chop, you eat, you chop, you eat. The orange reflex or the red reflex gets better and better. And so these grayish or whitish fragments can be very easily seen uh, uh, camouflaging underneath the uh, uh, white corneal opacity. And sometimes these little fragments may be there underneath this haze. So you have to lollipop them and then you can see the edge of the rexis here and foldable intraocular lens is being implanted into the bag. Now, uh, this was a case in fact where we did not know that there was a cataract and only pupiloplasty was being planned in this case. And with the help of the cutter vitrector, vitrectomy probe, uh, the pupil is being enlarged. And as the pupil was enlarged, the zonular cataract was present at the back. So on the table itself, it was uh, decided to do a, a FACO emulsification surgery. The patient was young, so we didn't have to do a nuclear emulsification, only irrigation aspiration. And notice in these cases, again, the biomanual irrigation aspiration is of utmost importance uh, because uh, you can uh, uh, you can uh, very nicely go into the furnaces and uh, can uh, uh, do the aspiration of the cortical matter followed by lens uh, implantation. Now, sometimes you have a heart cataract, a patient of dry eye, which has been started on topical cyclosporin and rotopred before, and the pupil is not dilating. So, you have to use nylon hooks to increase your area of visualization, do eccentric cratter, plan an incision accordingly so that one half is clear and follow essentially the same principles which I had shown you earlier. Now, this is a case of limbal stem cell deficiency for which 
corneal surgery has already been done and the panels has come back again obviously because the, uh, the stem cell deficiency has not been addressed so you remove the entire panels from there and then the cornea looks quite clear and whenever it gets blurry or hazy put a blob of viscoelastic so as soon as you put a blob of viscoelastic it will get magnified for that split of a second for you to allow you to actually initiate the rexis and then subsequently do the rexis uh, which is stained uh, with the trap and blue dye but this is a black and a white cornea because this was a white cornea somebody tattooed this and this is being done on intra op oct microscope you can see that there is cyanide present which are released now this is followed again by using nylon hooks because the pupil is not dilating and even in these cases underneath the intra op oct microscope you can see if you lose the rexis you can again find it uh, on the intra op oct microscope underneath the haze and uh, whenever uh, now you have a third eye which is your uh, IOCT, which also helps you to see underneath the haze uh, if you miss out something onto the operating microscope. Of course, the steps remain essentially the same. Again, a little bit of eccentric technique is being followed here, and uh, this is followed by uh, aspiration of the cortex. And as soon as you put the intraocular lens, you can see that here you beneath this you will not be able to see uh, because of black and white cornea. But as soon as you put the uh, intraocular lens to irrigation aspiration the glow gets very good and then now you want to increase the uh, uh, area of visualization for the patient so you can do a uh, you can use a vitrector to um, do a vitrectomy in cases of steven johnson syndrome these tips and tricks are also very useful this is a case uh, such cases are high risk for keratoplasty so endoluminator is being used inside to actually chop the nucleus and uh, uh, one can see uh, where one has to chop and now it is being used outside to see where the intraocular lens is being implanted notice again the pupil did not dilate so the nylon hooks have been used to to increase the area of uh, visualization and uh, allow uh, phaco emulsification which can be done properly this patient was counting fingers at 1 meter in 2 to 20 40 post operatively again counting fingers in 2 to 20 40 and uh, you can have very tough cases like this PUK, do a patch graft, white cataract peeping from there, do a cataract surgery. So, patient has got a visual acuity finally of 618, not an eagle's vision, but enough for him to be ambulatory. This is again a case, uh, visual acuity improved to 612. Here, 660, but then again, patient becomes ambulatory. And uh, uh, because of the haze, the visual acuity is suboptimal. Now, even the femtosecond uh, cataract surgery is useful in cases of corneal haze, although uh, the laser may not penetrate the area where uh, the haze is present. But it helps you to actually, uh, even if the uh, rexis, for instance, is not complete in the area of the haze, this is the area of the haze which is there. So one can see underneath this. Even if it is not complete, then one can still uh, uh, fill the gaps or fill the bridges by just... Uh, an initial uh, femtorexis. Uh, this is uh, uh, stained with the trapan blue dye, and wherever it is, uh, uh, wherever there is a gap which is there, that can be those gaps can be bridged with the help of your capsulorexis forceps, and then subsequently the laser energy has already been used. So phaco energy which is used is much less when you do phaco emulsification in these cases, and this is followed by uh, irrigation aspiration. This is yet another case of. Uh, corneal haze with the cataract. Now the corneal haze is present right in the center. So here uh, it is a free floating kind of a capsular excess because, uh, because of the fact that uh, it has cut in the area beyond the corneal haze and one can still do uh, foldable intraocular lens implantation followed by irrigation aspiration. And this is the third case of uh, flax which has been done in case of corneal haze. So I do believe that again there's a corneal haze there and there would be a gap which is which will be present in the rexis from here to here so that gap can be actually bridged with the help of the capsular rexis forceps because it's already cut in this entire circumference here so uh, it becomes easier to do it and then subsequently the pre-chops also have been made uh, they also help to uh, uh, do the case in a much uh, smoother way this is followed by foldable intraocular lens implantation 
Now, uh, combined procedures may be required, for instance, in this case, a case of yield characteritis with uh, uh, steroidal degeneration. So, ALTK is being done. So, uh, the uh, 250 microns of the head is being used to remove the uh, area which is hazy, followed by uh, capsular excess nuclear emulsification, just as one would do routinely, except that uh, you have now less corneal tissue which is present there. And whenever it gets blurry, you put this blob of viscoelastic uh, and it will be this is followed by a foldable intraocular lens implantation and this is the donor cornea with the help of tenjiro monofilament nylon sutures. Now, uh, one uh, can also do this uh, in cases of uh, uh, chemical injuries such as this uh, and uh, layer by layer uh, dissection is done. Now, uh, you come up to a layer where uh, some amount of stroma is still left. You can't do a FACO with a clear uh, Desmet's membrane. So, some amount of stroma is still left. And then this is followed by the capsulorexis, which is done, followed by the uh, uh, nuclear emulsification, irrigation, aspiration, uh, just as one would do routinely. And then put a foldable intraocular lens in the bag. And like I said, if it gets blurry, just uh, put viscoelastic and uh, then the last layer which is just above the desmet membrane is removed right in the end and this is followed by suturing of the graft with tenzero monofilament nylon sutures. Uh, this is the post-op picture with visual apathy of 612. Now this is a case in which three rexes were done so we did epithelio rexes. Uh, this was in fact uh, preferred for penetrating keratoplasty. This was followed by the endothelio desmetorexis which was uh, fibrose in a case of fixed dystrophy, followed by anterior capsulorexis uh, uh, of the, uh, because of echo emulsification was planned, and then subsequently followed by nuclear emulsification and irrigation aspiration, foldable intraocular lens implantation, and then uh, uh, lenticule which has Desmet's membrane and stroma, uh, and this is then pulled intracamerally inside uh, the uh, anterior chamber. And air bubble is then instilled so that the graft is centered uh, uh, bang on. And this is the post-op picture with the visual activity of 69 parts. And we didn't have to do a full fitness keratoplasty. And this was a sutureless keratoplasty. But coming to the last bit, which is the most physiological graft, and that is a DMET role. Uh, whenever you have cases of fixed dystrophy or you uh, with cataract, then in these cases, DMET can be done. So this is the Desmet's membrane, which has been stained with a trap and do dye. And uh, this is being stripped all over, you come right up to the center on all four quadrants and then lay it on the corneoscleral rim itself. And after laying it, uh, this is uh, dried uh, onto the edges so that the graft sticks to the back of the cornea and then followed by trephination. And then we stain it with a trap and do dye again. The peripheral part is removed because it had already been stripped and this is the desmet membrane roll, which is then um, stripped and subsequently, uh, this is a case of uh, tubes dystrophy in which uh, cataract surgery has already been done uh, for, uh, and foldable intraocular lens has been implanted. Uh, so now desmetorexis is being done and then subsequently, uh, this desmet membrane roll is taken and is uh, implanted uh, inside the anterior chamber. Uh, whenever you have this biceps curl upwards configuration, then you know that this is the endothelial side up. So this is the graph which is upside down. So you flip it up because this is absolutely opposite to what it should be. Now it is on the uh, same configuration as it should be, biceps curls upwards. And then air bubble is instilled so that the graph gets stuck to the back of the cornea. So this is on post-op day one. You can't even make out that a graph was done. And this is at post-op month one. It just looks as though somebody has done only a fake one. Now, even after several grafts, this was a post PK DC graft uh, because PK after PK uh, the cornea had decompensated and the patient was faking. So uh, again, a cataract surgery is being done in this case after staining with a trypan blue dye, doing a rexis, and you can actually see the movement of the graft throughout the procedure. What happens to it uh, when you are doing a cataract surgery? So uh, the irrigation aspiration is done. And just as we are doing the last bit after intraocular lens implantation, notice that the graft starts to move. 
so in the end one has to instill air bubble so that the graft gets completely stuck to the back of the cornea and this is the end of the procedure after doing cataract surgery in the post case uh, tsec case so uh, to conclude the uh, phaco emulsification and corneal opacity is a challenge but uh, one needs to plan everything one needs to plan the incisions like i told you operating microscope should be good always remember to put your retro illumination on because sometimes because of the haze or because of a white cataract you may not see right in the beginning whether it is on or not use nylon hooks optical arrhythmy trap and do dye or endo illuminator always use dispersive uh, ovd and good uh, irrigating solution uh, you may have to use a eccentric crater technique the fluidic parameter should be low and in some of the cases where the cornea is very hazy and you can't do a corneal transplantation you should counsel the patient that what we are looking at is only the ambulatory visual acuity so for all those cases which are high risk for grafts one should do phaco emulsification first and see how it goes and one can always do a corneal transplantation procedure later but for all those cases which have good prognosis for grafts uh, one can do combined procedures so thank you very much for your kind attention thank you madam Thank you very much, Professor Namrata Sharma. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the honor. Yes, you have uh, delivered a, an excellent topic on phacomalsification in hedge cornea, corneal hedge. Uh, I think all of us have uh, some idea about this type of operations, but you have shown us the triple procedure as well as what to do in case of this type of operative microscope should be a good one. There should be retro illumination. What should be our dispersive OVD? And also, uh, we should use the low uh, fluid parameter. So all these things are our uh, listening and uh, les a lesson to all of our uh, uh, ophthalmologists. I think today, this prestigious early memorial lecture which you have given, we have uh, already uh, enriched our knowledge through this lecture. You all know that Bangladesh is uh, uh, a good friend of India. Our father of the nation, Bangabandhu uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who announced this uh, uh, independence. At that time, India, about 10 million people were in India. He uh, helped us a lot. Our honorable prime minister, she was bound to stay in India during uh, after the death of our father of the nation. So in all respect, we think we are the good friend who will be everlasting in uh, all uh, sectors will be good friend. You have already today uh, made us in such a friendship that in ophthalmology, AIMS and Ophthalmological Society of Bangladesh and my university, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Medical University will work together. And we will make a collaboration with AIMS and your center and we will work together. Really? I think, yes, sure. We will work together and I thank that uh, this type of lecture will be able to hear from you physically and we all should be always praying that when the corona will be off and after the corona is off, we will uh, see all of us together physically in Bangladesh and also in India. With these rewards, again, I thank you for your excellent presentation and excellent lecture of prestigious Ali Memorial Lecture. You all know that Professor Alim Chaudhary was an ophthalmologist and he was also a leader. And today, his daughter, Professor Nujak Chaudhary, is one of the renowned ophthalmologists of this country. So I think everything uh, will proceed in such a way that we will work together from, and we will always remember and respect our uh,
daughter of this country. Again, I thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sharpuddin, uh, Dr. Rava Hussain, uh, Dr. Mustaq Ahmed, uh, Dr. Deepak, my good friends, uh, uh, Professor Abdul Qadar, and my very, very dear friend, Dr. Nizar uh, Chaudhary. Thank you so much uh, for this. And it was really, like I said, I was completely overwhelmed by uh, uh, your father's introduction, Nizar, uh, and uh, I salute him. And uh, Thank you so much for this. And uh, regarding the collaboration with AIMS, I think we will work. If we can have some kind of an exchange program or even if we can have people coming from Bangladesh uh, for, uh, say, a three-month uh, fellowship or for a six-month fellowship, we'll just work it out. And uh, I'll fix up a meeting very soon. I am really delighted to have with me uh, our OSB President, Professor Shorfuddin Ahmed Sir, Secretary Professor Abdul Qadir, Scientific Secretary Mustaq Ahmed, and also special. Uh, I am delighted and thanks to uh, our mentor, our guardian, uh, and the legend ophthalmologist in Bangladesh, uh, uh, ex Shark President, APO President. Professor Abba Hussain, Madam, and also the audience. As you know, uh, Ali Memorial Lecture is the most prestigious lecture and event of our conference. And every year we invite someone who is legendary in the field of ophthalmology from across the world. And they speak uh, some topic which is very important, which is really uh, interesting for all of our ophthalmology. And this year, we are really delighted that we have Professor Namrata Sharma with us, and uh, she has chosen a very good topic. And I am really enjoyed her lecture, and for, I think, like me, all of our audience actually uh, enjoyed her lecture, and also she has given very good insight as our um, president, Professor Sharfuddin Ahmad Sar say, Beku is a very common surgery which uh, is the bread and butter for all ophthalmologists. But Beku in corneal heads is sometimes disappointing and very, you know, it's a very complicated thing. Most of us, we cannot handle these things. And I think from your lecture, our ophthalmologist will uh, do this people surgery and learn many things uh, which will be guided them in their future work mostly to give their patients better vision uh, in future. Uh, I am really uh, glad to uh, 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 thank Professor Ram, uh, Namrata Shamra, Shamra for her uh, as uh, she took uh, some time for us uh, for preparing this lecture and given uh, time to join our this OSB conference, uh, which is and um, which gives us an excellent opportunity of Bangladesh ophthalmologist to hear these things. I should uh, thank her again and also thanks all of our audience um, who has enjoyed the lecture and participated in this lecture. So uh, uh, with this few words, I would like to thanks and to conclude this uh, Ali Memorial Lecture uh, event. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Namrata. Thank you so much, ma'am, for having me. And thank you for all the pleasure to be Coming okay. I look forward to coming physically there to yes. Bangladesh and meeting you all in person. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We miss you physically, but uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Uh, in very short Hello, time, we will be Thank you, madam. Thank you for your kind words. Our chief guest, please. Our chief guest. Thank you.
Recording stopped. I invite all of them. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Professor Namruta. Thank you. We are now leaving. Thank you. Uh, Professor, uh, and uh, we will uh, see you again. And there will be the inauguration at 12 o'clock. Thank you very much.